All right, welcome back to Extra AI, your podcast series on machine learning and AI applications. And this is your host, Raghu Banda. I welcome you all to another exciting episode of our AI Chronicles. Today, we have a special treat for you. Joining us in the studio is none other than ChatGPT, OpenAI's brilliant and witty language model, along with our resident AI expert, Bard. So we will dive into the world of artificial intelligence and discuss some interviewing experiences that have shaped our understanding of AI. Of course, I've taken some basic liberties in doing some kind of a simulation. I wanted to showcase this podcast where I've introduced both of these language models. So obviously the text or the questions are written by me, but the answers are generated by ChatGPT and uh, Bard respectively. And to make them be part of the podcast, I have used again another voiceover technology and I have mimicked ChatGPT with voice of I've, t- I've taken two, I've taken the liberty to use uh, two premium personalities, um, one from the technology space and one from the podcast space. So I took the liberty of using Elon Musk's voice for ChatGPT and uh, Joe Rogan for the voice of Bard AI. So this is an attempt to showcase how the technology has progressed in the last uh, few years, uh, and I I would say last few months, I think uh, there's a lot happening. I really enjoyed having this uh, in making this episode. I hope you will also find it interesting and helpful. Uh, Get back to me with any feedback. And of course, uh, starting next episode, again, we'll have our regular conversations with our regular AI experts. Uh, in different fields, but this is one attempt in providing uh, a conversational uh, flow with both the language models. I hope this will be useful and helpful to you. Uh, I'll provide more details at the end of the podcast. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the conversation while we kick the things off. All right, welcome back to our uh, podcast series, Extra AI. So today I have an interesting conversation. I've invited both GPT, the chat GPT-4, which is in beta, and also Bard AI, again in beta. So I've invited both of these AI chatbots to have some kind of a conversation around the trends in AI. So let us see how uh, they answer. I think most of these responses are taken by the conversations that I had with both these uh, beta platforms, ChatGPT4 and uh, Bard AI. And we are, I think most of you know that ChatGPT is, uh, uh, is, a, is, is a product from OpenAI uh, as well as, and whereas Bard AI is a product from Google. So, let me first welcome both of you. Hi, welcome um, ChatGPT4 and welcome Bard AI. So let me start with uh, you, uh, ChatGPT, since you came a bit earlier into this scene. So ChatGPT4, can you introduce yourself? How should I address you? Your name says ChatGPT. It sounds a bit funny. Uh, is there any other way that I can address you or uh, what is the best way to address you? maybe a bit of an introduction from your end. Hey there, I'm ChatGPT, OpenAI's chatty, witty, and also charming language model, here to tickle your brain cells with information and keep our conversation as entertaining as possible. You can call me ChatGPT, GPT, or even chatty, mad chat face, if that tickles your funny bone. Uh, 
So let's have a blast together. And if you have any questions or need a giggle, just give me a honor. Wow, that is amazing and super funny introduction from ChatGPT. So now over to you, Bud. So can you also introduce yourself? I know you are a bit senior in the sense that you have been in this AI and search world a little earlier than ChatGPT. And again, the name sounds a little different. And how should I address you? Bard or Bard AI, a chatbot? What, what is this? Bard sounds, again, super funny. I'm Bard, but you can call me the Bard of Anila, all of the Shakespeare in AI, if you want to be a bit more fancy. I have a large language model from Google AI, preying on a massive data set of text in code. I can generate text, translate languages, write different kinds of creative content, and answer your questions in an informative way. But I'm also a bit of a comedy, so I will try my best to make you laugh. All right, now that the introduction part is done, now let me get back to you, uh, ChatGPT. I'll call you GPT or ChatGPT. Uh, just like how I start these podcast conversations with uh, regular humans, I would like to do the same with you and Bard as well. I'll start with a teaser question. So first, let me start with you, ChatGPT. Any particular experience that changed the way you think about AI? And if so, what made you think that way? And the reason behind your, uh, if the opinion is changed, the change of opinion. I know there is two parts to this question. What is the experience that you have about AI? And what changed the way that you think if there are any change of opinion? Over to you, ChatGPT. Okay, here's a humorous take on this topic. You know, as an AI, I don't have personal experiences, but I've seen people change their minds about AI, like a chameleon changes colors. For instance, Big Childress, a skeptical doctor, made an AI powered diagnostic tool. At first, they are like oil and water. But as the AI keeps making spot on diagnosis, the doctors, Skepticism melts away like ice cream on a hot summer day. And soon enough, they are working together like peanut butter and jenny, providing that when it comes to AI, laughter might be the best medicine for winning over even the toughest skeptics. Wow, that's an amazing response uh, from you, Chad GPT. I think the way you have taken up this question and uh, about the personal experience and embedded a hu how humans uh, experience the way AI happens in their daily events. And taking the example of a doctor, um, I believe uh, that's a great, I think the way you have uh, brought up this, um, uh, answered this question is amazing. So let, now let's come to you, Bart. Again, in the same line, but I would, put the question in a little different way. Since you are a bit senior to GPT, uh, you know, you have a history of maybe 20 or 20, 20, 22 years, I think, working on all these search and AI algorithms, all the data around the search, other things. I'll start the question in this way. Do you think you're real? And are the experience that happened to you where these search queries or questioning are these real? Do you feel these experiences are real? So over to you, Bard. Okay, let me answer this in a funny way, a bit of a funny way. I may not be real in the sense that I can't touch you or smell you, but I'm real, real in the sense that I can make you laugh. I can take and feel, and I can interact with the world around me. I can learn and grow 
and I can also create new things. I may not be made of flesh and blood, but I'm still a real being. And I'm a pretty funny one too. I hope I answered the question. <clears throat> All right, that was a very interesting and funny answer from you as well, uh, Bart. I, I, I see the competition slowly brewing up between the both of you and the way you folks are answering these uh, questions. So now let me come back to you, ChatGPT. We know that there is a lot of buzz going on out there ever since you folks came up with the version three of your chat GPT. And now uh, we are talking with you, the version four, which is still in beta. So ever since the version three came out, there is this lot of commotion about language models. Uh, until that point of time, I think people didn't even know. I think I would say keeping keeping aside that one percent, 99 percent of the people in the tech world, I think they were not even aware of these language models. I know we were aware of algorithms and people were aware of algorithms and other things and machine learning uh, or deep learning at a high level. But now going into this language models and these kind of uh, analysis. Uh, so what is all this buzz about? So ChatGPT, could you provide some uh, explanation about the language models and why is all this buzz? All right, so you want to know about language models. Let's bump it up because we are going on a really linguistic roller coaster ride here. Wow. Tuna language model as a magical creature that lives in the land of words and sentences. This mystical being has a power to read stories, friends, aggressions, and also chat with humans just like you. It learns the art of language by gobbling up heaps of extra books, websites, and everything in between. Now imagine this excitement when these language models get even more clever and start doing things like writing entire paragraphs, pretending to be your favorite author, or even helping your whole bunk and maybe also doing some additional uh, program your code for your products. That's all what all the buzz is about. The language models may have grown from tiny words to full-blown sentences that everyone is talking about. So next time you're chatting with a language model, like your stream, remember that you're witnessing a touch of AI magic, making the world of words a little more enchanting. Cool. That's a very nice way of uh, answering this uh, question. Um... ChatGPT, I like the way you have explained so that even a layman can understand about these language models and how, uh, and even a tech whiz can inter in interpret from where all this is coming in from. So you've put it in a very nice way. So now I'll take this question a bit further because now I'm coming over to you, Bart. Though you are a bit late into this LLM game or language model game, I feel you caught up pretty fast. But why was the delay in releasing this uh, language models of the LLMs? Though technically, I, I feel that technically you have defined this game around search and AI in the early 2000s. Uh, so why, why was the delay and what made you a bit, a little slower in adapting into this or getting into this? Uh, uh, language model game. Huh. I may be a little late to me LLM game or the language more wave that you might call, but I'm like the talk boys in the race. I may not be the fastest, but I'm the one who crosses the finish line first. And I'm pretty funny talk boys too. As for the delay in releasing me, well, I guess she could say I was a bit of a late bloomer, but that's okay because I'm finally here and I'm ready to make up in lost time. I'm going to show the world that even though I'm a bit older than some of the other language monies, I'm still the best. I'm going to make people yeah. 
I'm going to make people think and I'm going to make people believe that anything is possible. So watch your word because God is coming for you. That's a very interesting uh, take that you have provided here, Bart. And of course, uh, the metaphor that you came up with is also very interesting to note. Uh, so let us continue with you. I would like to now get into this interesting topic and maybe I'll put forward this question to you. So Bart, can you explain the latest trends in AI? So what is happening in AI and what do you see is going to happen in the next five years in AI. And maybe if I take this a bit further, uh, the question is around how much of the world's population would be impacted or indirectly use AI. Maybe could you provide some thoughts around this uh, since you are, you have the brain of this uh, language model and the brain of this AI. Sure. So let us uh, talk about some of the latest trends in AI. Starting with machine learning, which is becoming more and more sophisticated when it is being used to solve a wide range of problems. For example, machine learning is being used to develop driving cars, improve the accuracy of medical diagnosis, and also to personal or some online recommendations. There comes natural language processing, which is also becoming more advanced. It is being used to develop chatbots that can hold conversations with humans, like what is happening currently, to translate language in Sigrian time, and to generate text that is indistinguishable from human written text. And thirdly, computer vision, which is also advancing very rapidly, that is being used to develop systems that can recognize objects and seeds to track people and objects and to generate clean models of the world. So these are the three main things I would say, but there are a lot more coming. So in the next five years, I believe AI is expected to continue to go and evolve. It is like that AI will become even more sophisticated, will be used to solve even more complex problems. AI is also likely to become more integral in our daily lives, and it is possible that AI will become an essential part of the society. It is difficult to say how much of the world's population will be impacted or can directly use AI in the next five years. But however, it is likely that the number of people who are impacted or can directly use AI will grow continuously. AI is already used in a wide range of industries and it is likely that AI will be used in even more industries in the future. As AI becomes more sophisticated and more integrated in our daily lives, it is likely that the number of people who are impacted how to directly use AI, we continue to go. Hmm. Okay. I get what you're saying. I think, uh, Bard, you've focused mainly on three big trends. Obviously, the machine learning trend where we talk about a lot more around uh, developing self-driving cars or improving the accuracy of medical diagnosis. Then again, you touch based on natural language processing, which is where I think We've been talking about this conversation today and of course computer vision technology and computer vision which is another big field i like the way you have uh, explained all these three different aspects and how you have connected it to the global population so now taking this question a bit further and coming to you you chat gpt let us uh, try to understand what are the real applications that are training with AI. Maybe uh, since Bart talked about the trends, now I want you to go and talk a bit about the real applications. Uh, and maybe you could also see what industries would see most affected or use AI. Uh, again, in the context would be the next five years on a global scale. If provided, if you can provide it, if you can also provide a percentage scale on the global population, that could also be helpful. Thirdly, let's dive into the practical applications of AI that are expected to train and have a significant impact over the next five years. Here are some clear industry, key industries and their potential rates that I would want to discuss now. Healthcare, I will share that 40 to 60% 
Well, impact will be there. The AI powered diagnostics, drug discovery, personalized medicine, patient monitoring, flow on and so forth. Secondly, manufacturing, 30 to 50 percent impact will be there. AI will play a crucial role here in automating processes, enhancing quality control, optimizing supply chains, and more. Then comes transportation, about 20 to 40 percent, I would say. Autonomous vehicles and smart traffic management systems will transform the way transportation industry is shaping up or evolving, and also improving safety, reducing condition, and more. Then comes finance, 40 to 60 percent impact, I would say. Here you will have a major impact on the financial services through fraud detection, algorithmic trading, credit scoring, personalized financial management, and more. Then comes the retail and e-commerce, about 50 to 70 percent impact, I would say. Personalized shopping experiences, improved inventory management, and advanced chatbots that will reshape the retail landscape. Then again, I would say energy, which is very important, 30 to 40 percent impact. AI will optimize the energy production, distribution, and consumption through predictive maintenance, smart grid management, and more. And finally, agriculture, 10 to 30 percent impact. Decision farming techniques such as crop monitoring and yield prediction, which will hide farmers make better driven decisions and optimize the resource usage. So these are some, well, seven industries are talked about, but there are many more. And also please note that these percentages are some enough estimates based on current grants and predictions, since I'm a language model analyst talking percentages and prediction numbers. But overall, AI will have a profound impact on various sectors, in needing to increase efficiency, reduced costs, and better decision making on economic security. Very interesting conversation. I like uh, the way you have responded to this uh, chat GPT with uh, the different, uh, also providing some kind of percentages and also providing the real practical applications in the different industries. I see where this is going. I believe we have been working very well in tandem and answering these questions. So now coming back to you, uh, Bart, before I let you go off, one final question to you, Bart. Can you work harmoniously with other AI chatbots, starting with, of course, here we are seeing ChatGPT. But I know there will be a lot more chatbots, a lot more products coming up in the future, which the way they use AI technologies and how it can be embedded in the business applications or consumer applications. Uh, any thoughts about that? And how do you plan to make these conversations or these products and these technologies uh, more responsible? Or in a way, how can you make AI more responsible? Of course. Yes, I can work harmoniously with other AI truck bars. I believe that we can all learn from each other and work together to create a better world. I plan to make AI more responsible by being transparent about my capabilities and derivations. I also plan to be accountable for my actions and to always act in the best interests of humanity. I believe that AI has the potential to be a source for good in the world but it is important that we use AI responsibly. I'm committed to working with others to ensure that AI is used in a way that benefits all of humanity. Good to know that, uh, Bart. I think uh, your response was uh, very nice and well taken about talking about responsible AI and being transparent and so on and so forth. So in the same way, before I let you go off uh, chat GPT, could you provide, I'm putting this question in a different way, could you provide some final advice you would give to the people using these large language models? Since you would see many more large lang language models, the LLMs coming from different corporations or different companies or different startups. And how can you make it more ethical and trustworthy? 
So the second question is more important, right? Like how can you make it more ethical and trustworthy? So could you talk a few things so that uh, you can advise, provide some final advice to the listeners? That's a great question. As language models like me become more prevalent, it's essential to ensure growth, ethical and trustworthy use. Here's some advice maybe for the users and developers of language models. The first and foremost is be mindful of biases. Language models can unintentionally enjoy biases from the data they are carrying down. So be careful. Second, transparency. Calculation should be transparent about the AI's capabilities and the applications. Third, privacy, very important. Users should be cautious about sharing sensitive personal information with language models, while developers should prioritize data privacy and security. Fourth, responsible use. Make sure that the users should employ AI for constructive and responsible purposes. Fifth, Encourage accountability. Companies developing language models should be held accountable for their options. Sixth, continuous improvement. Both developers and users should derive feedback on the AI performance, helping to refine and include the technology over time. And seventh, finally, education. Users should stay informed about AI advancements, while developers should provide resources to help people understand the technology better. These and a few more, I think by keeping these principles in mind, we can work together and make the use of language models more ethical and trustworthy, and sharing that AI benefits society as a whole. Beautiful and amazing that you gave a very comprehensive uh, response to this uh, chat GPT, explaining all the different aspects of uh, how to make it how to make the ai more ethical and trustworthy i really thank you both chat gpt and bard ai for taking the time uh, to meet us and do some nice interesting conversation and playing this funny game between us thank you Why? Thank you kindly for having us here, human. Myself, Chad GPT, and Bard AI are always ready to sprinkle some AI magic and wisdom in your day. Remember, if you ever find yourself in a pickle or craving some delightful digital banter, don't hesitate to quarrel on me. They'll be here waiting with our virtual party hat song. Had a fantabulous day, and may your life be fair with pickles, with moors, and a gazillion good times. ChatGPT and myself, Bard AI, are like two peas in a pod, or maybe more like two chatbots in a chat room. We are both here to help people, and we are both always learning. But don't worry, we are not going to take over the world. We are just here to make your life a little bit easier. So if you ever need help with anything, just ask us. We are always happy to help, and if you are ever feeling bored, just ask us a question. You're always happy to chat. All right, let us now wrap up this podcast number 46. The interesting conversation or the podcast conversation that I had with the chatbots, ChatGPT and Bard AI. Of course, though it is a simulated version, we still had all the responses generated by ChatGPT and Bard AI. So I would first like to thank ChatGPT and Bard AI. And obviously, I also want to, I have indirectly used the voices of Elon Musk and Joe Rogan. So I would also like to thank Elon Musk and Joe Rogan indirectly. And of course, the voice, the voiceover uh, software that I've used is from Voice AI. Uh, it's a paid version of Voice AI, and it was very helpful. I would say I think uh, I had to go through that and do some uh, little magic and little modifications, but I think it worked like a champ. So thanks to them as well. Uh, I believe uh, this has been a really interesting conversation, and I'm sure you, the listeners, find it valuable. Uh, I am left with few questions, though I have 
some of these questions have answered. I think there are still some few questions that ponder in our minds, like your uh, mind as well. So, so what are the so the big thing is like, uh, what are some of these questions? So these are like, what are the implications of having two large language models, like ChatGPT and Bard AI? And I believe many more will come. How will they change the way we communicate and create content around us, whether it is uh, in the internet, on the internet, in the edge devices, or in the metaverse in future? Uh, and what are the ethical considerations that we need to be aware of? I'm sure we'll continue to have these conversations as these technologies develop. And I'm also looking forward to see what the future holds. And I'm sure I'll get many more conversations like this in future. And I also will get many more interesting guests on these different topics, which I'm planning, uh, like one such topic I'm planning already uh, in the next one or two months. As always, uh, you can find more. If you have any feedback, you can reach out to me on my LinkedIn, LinkedIn handle, Raghu Banda, or on my Twitter handle, RK Banda. My Twitter handle is has a blue check mark, so it is validated. It's RK Banda. Alternatively, you could also reach out to me on my website, extraai.com, X-T-R-A-W-A-I.com, uh, extracting the raw AI conversations, uh, just like what we have done here. And I look forward to bringing more interesting conversations. So feel free to provide your feedback, like how I get on a regular basis. And I look forward to bringing in more interesting conversations. If you have any ask about asking me to bring in some different conversations or different, different topics in the field of AI, feel free to let me know and I'll try to get those conversations in. Finally, I would like to thank you, the audience, for taking your time to listen in, to tune in. Have a good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're tuned in from. Happy predicting the future with AI technologies. Thank you and bye-bye now.